a really good win tonight. Penn State's, um, as I said before the game, they're they're a nice team. They have some really good attackers. Uh, difficult to you know kind of match up with the way they play. And I thought we um, we created some wonderful chances. We didn't have as much of the ball as we typically do, um, and we weren't as sharp overall uh, tonight. In, in kind of from the 18 to 18, but the reality is. Uh, we just need we need to get results as we know, and we, we have a lot of good soccer that we had in this game. But I thought overall we were um, not at our best, and, and again I credit Penn State for for partly some of that. Uh, but this will be an important win for us heading into the the, fa the last part of the Big Ten season. So we're pleased. You talk about Colin Webb. He had some really really big saves tonight to keep you guys in the lead. One mm -hmm. He did. Um, I think Colin, you know, has maybe been called on a little bit more this year to make the big save <clears throat> than even last year. And, um, you know, thank goodness the deflection tonight didn't find its way. I think we've had four this year. And, by, you know, my God, it was close again on that one shot that deflected. He was able to get back across. But, you know, Colin's played a lot of confidence. The guys behind him or in front of him are feeling that. They feel like he can make a save when we need it. And tonight he did that. But they got a couple of really good attackers. So. Um, yeah, would we like to them get free a little bit less? Yes, but the reality is you're you going to have to make some saves from time to time, and, and that's his job, and he did a nice job of tonight. Connor Maloney limited to just one shot on the night. How would you assess your defense? for? for he's good. Him? Connor's an excellent player. I think he's one of the better players in the conference. Um, you know, he did drift a little bit deeper and wide the way they were playing. It looked like they were trying to get in the channels with, with Dayon. And, and create some 1v1 opportunities. So we kind of changed tactically in the second half to take some of that space away, which did drop us a little bit, which we, we typically don't do, but I thought it was effective. Uh, we just need to take care of the ball going the other way. But I think that was one of the reasons that, that Maloney may have been, might have jammed him a little bit with his freedom and to get on second balls and run with it and be a little bit more dangerous in the open field. We, we made the field a little bit smaller for him. Yeah. How, do you, how do you combat some of that size? They have bunch of guys over six foot, Lillard's really the only guy that, that stands out on this mm -hmm. team. How how do you combat that? Well, you just got to be physical and, and try to, again, get, you know, um, body them up so their runs aren't as effective without fouling, certainly. And then, you know, our key zone players are free to go challenge and Grant's one of those. And then you, you got to call on your keeper to make, make a, a, a play for you when the ball's up in the air that long. But they were dangerous on on their restarts, we knew that. I think they were they were playing for some restarts. Quite honestly, I could, I could kind of sense that from their team because they felt they might have had an advantage. Um, we, but again, we bent a little bit on them, uh, made a couple adjustments as soon as we saw what they were doing and seemed to work a little better. But you know, it's like trying to solve Tanner for 90 minutes and some of our other better players. You know, they're going to get free a little bit. And mm -hmm. um, same thing with a couple of the restarts. You can't be perfect against this. You just got to limit it and know where they're going and do your best. Corey Thomas getting his first career goal tonight, but right before that, he made a really key play, kicking the ball out of bounds, forcing a throw in by Penn State instead of a goal kick. And how do you assess the little plays like that and then it, earning it with the goal later on? How'd you pick that up? That's the little stuff that we do talk about. Um, Corey, you know, those are plays that have been inconsistent in his game, and he's so talented individually, but kind of doing the things that don't go on a stat sheet, as you mentioned. Um, you know, having an open field tackle, um, going up for an aerial challenge. He probably won't win, but if the second guy is going to win, but he's not before he typically go up maybe 50% on some occasions. So I think he's turned the corner, and I'm, I'm really happy for him because he's been one that's worked really hard to be consistent. And we keep telling him we'll reward you with time with that, and, and he is getting some more. And to get a goal, I think, will really boost his confidence. And I see Corey finding more time moving forward. Getting uh, Billy McConnell back in the starting lineup tonight and getting a full 90 from him. What did you see out of his play? And is he back fully? Yeah, Billy was. I mean, Billy wanted to play against Penn State. I mean, that's his home state. We've been a little unfortunate against Penn State, I think, the last couple of years, quite honestly, based on the run of play. And Billy is as competitive as any player on our team. And, you know, he, he wasn't the sharpest in the first half um, with some of his passing, but he hasn't been playing much. So, you know, I thought he get, got into the game and was much, much better as the game went on. And, but defensively, uh, his, his ability to be effective one v one, and his his heading ability, his size, his strength, and his toughness is is one of the keys to our team. And he did all those things really well. So I'm really happy for Billy. Offensively, sort of 
a good news, bad news thing. Good news is you guys scored against Penn State first time since 2012. Oh boy. <laughs> and it's a long time. The flip side is you had a couple of point blank chances that I'm sure you expect to finish. You know, the, they were off to look on the video. It, you know, you, you look at it and go, did they they use the right surface? They use the right kind of club, if you want to use an analogy. And I thought Phil did on a couple. And yeah, we, we said we got to finish those, absolutely. But it's different, I thought, with some earlier in the year where I thought we were, we were, we, we looked rushed and you look back at the video and talk and you're like, you know, you a little bit more composure. Um, so I thought they were composed in that moment, but yeah, they didn't, they didn't find the back of the net. And it could have been four. I mean, Gutman's chance, Rico's, Phil had three. It, it was, um, so yeah, the, the good news is we found the one we needed. And I do feel Phil is going to find a goal and it might just start coming in, in buckets for him because he's played a really, a really good, yeah, he's had a good year for us. I guess, uh, I mean, you guys haven't played on a lead against Penn State in a long time. It, it, that's a team that's easier to play, obviously, when you've got an advantage. Yeah, they, they would have been very comfortable sitting and, and making it really hard. And so they had to obviously extend the numbers. I thought we were great in transition and catching them. I didn't think their, their back line dealt with some of our pace at times. And so the second half kind of played well for us. It's just, again, psychological. We usually like to, to, to be more of a pressing team. So we had to sit a little bit to counteract what I thought they were going to be effective with. And um, but I think I'll let limit to their quality chances. They're good. You know, I didn't know about the stats since 12. Um, that is surprising, but they, they have been a little bit of a thorn to us. And you kind of shake your head a few every after a couple of years and go, you know, how that happened. So it's nice to, to flip it back. And you mentioned earlier, I mean, you guys have had stronger performances but not gotten results this year. Mm -hmm. How important was that just to get a result like this and maybe get some momentum going? Yeah, it's important to, you know, again, you, Talk about an overtime win, you, you, you get a result with a man down, you come from behind. This is like another one you check off and say, didn't have our best game, but we, 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 we bent, we stayed consistent in our mentality, and we found a way. And it does give you confidence to know in another game when we're not playing our best, it's, it's not a panic time. We, we just need to stay consistent and try to work through it, which we did. Um, and so it does give you a little confidence. Like, we don't have to play at our best every game to, to find a result. And I think the team will take some of that away tonight. What are you looking forward to against Louisville? Uh, another top ten. Match yeah, what a great match! Louisville's playing great, and it's you know obviously a school rival. Um, it's become more of a soccer rival in the last you know five seven years. Not much before that. Um, I have a lot of respect for what they've done down there. They built a beautiful stadium, one of the nicest in the country, and you know the last couple of years have been really good games. I expect this year to be another. Fabulous game, and it's neat that we got Richard Ballard in senior year going back home, and Rich is playing really well, and I know he's really excited. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough game, and it's one of these two that um, you know it's kind of two seasons right now, the Big Ten season, um, which is again prepping us for our seeding and, and, and our resume. But you also have these huge non-conference games, which everyone in the conference is cheering for us come, come Tuesday because we all benefit with a good result, and um, I'm really excited to, to play them. Is there any extra, uh, what you call it? I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of motivation, but just coming off of last Tuesday at Notre Dame, another mm -hmm. chance to sort of um, prove yourselves against the top competition. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we walked away, you know, out. the guys didn't lose any confidence for Notre Dame. I know on the surface and certainly the score line, it's hard to say that's, but you know, anyone that was there and, you know, talking to their coach, it, you know, won a 4 0 game, and clearly they're not that different from us. And so I know the guys know that. But the reality is it was a result we dropped. Whether it's 1-0 or 4-0, it, it, it doesn't matter at this point. Louisville is the game now that I don't think that's redemption for, for last week, um, Jeremy, but I do think that it's a game that it's the opportunity we don't, we don't want to miss again. I said we, don't, we, we, we need to win this game tonight in the week, if, I, if you told me which one we needed to win. Um, but the opportunity game come Tuesday is phenomenal, and we don't want to miss that. So that's, that's the mindset going in is – Let's play free, let's go after it, and let's, let's find a result.